It sounds like agricultural science fiction, a cheap, accessible option for lowering methane production that can help remediate land ravaged by wind and soil erosion and doesn't need much water. But in fact, this potential solution to all those challenges has been right here in the nation's backyard all along. Native fodder shrubs are being trialled across the southern states as part of a future food industries program and may offer farmers new options to make their businesses more resilient in a drying climate. At Binu on the northern margins of the West Australian wheat belt, Don Nairn is one of the last farmers in sheep. He crops 2,000 hectares of his 2,500 hectare property, but this son of a shearer still thinks there's a future running sheep in a traditional mixed farm. Oh yeah, I've always been sort of fond of sheep, kind of like sheep. I think, you know, you have to like sheep to stay in them. But I couldn't say there's any money involved in it, could I? Because there's not been. I figured that uh, if we want to stay in sheep, which I wanted to do, um, uh, we had to change the way that we ran the sheep. If the system that we d develop now, that works, well then I think it'll, it'll, it'll be okay. Don Nairn is an advocate for a grain and graze system, rotating his sheep on cereal crops and stubble, but there's a limit to the profitability of this system. The solution, he believes, is to get some value out of the 10% of his farm on hilltops and rises, which is prone to wind erosion and no good for growing wheat or lupins. Since 2004, he's been growing forage shrubs like Tagasasti to repair the land and provide feed and shelter for his sheep. We've got a long way to go yet. We've done a lot of things wrong, and you know, initially. Uh, I think we've got the density wrong. We've planted too many trees too close together. Now Don Nairn is working with CSIRO scientist Dean Ravel on the Enrich program, a national research project looking at better understanding and greater use of native perennial shrubs. It's a national program with people and research organisations across the country and at a broad level what we're trying to do is give or provide uh, producers, growers more options. Um, to tackle the multiple challenges that they're facing and that's to obviously remain profitable and more so, and that's the key driver, but also address natural resource management um, targets as well and whether that's salinity or wind erosion risk is, is a handful. So we're really trying to get um, multiple benefits from, from the, the forage options that we're exploring rather than just trying to tackle one thing at a time piece by piece, we're trying to put many, many pieces of the jigsaw together simultaneously. At Minginew, south of Geraldton, Craig Forsyth is also a keen advocate for perennial shrubs. He stopped cropping his farm about 10 years ago and is now a major beef producer. So there's about 12, 1300 hectares going into crop every year during the 90s and then after we ran into a couple of problems with herbicide resistance, water logging and diseases, uh, we decided to uh, manage the livestock and over the next couple of years sheep went out of the system and then we uh, went into the cattle, more the rotational style. In the last decade, he's transformed his farm with a range of subtropical perennial pasture species. Ten years ago, if you had told me, you know, you'll be running 2,500 to 2,800 cattle over winter in here, I was thought you know you're on whoopee weed but it's been very successful but the best success, success about it is it's there's a symbiosis occurring between the annual pasture and the perennial pasture so actually the perennials have helped the annual so we're getting most of our production out of the improved annual pastures so there's a great synergy that's been occurring between the two. Craig Forsyth has also grown 600 hectares of forage crops, increasing his productivity by as much as 300%. The hardy, deep-rooted plants have prevented wind erosion and also brought waterlogged, salt-prone country back to life. You can see there's different ones here with the Alanuka or the um, coastal province. I suppose it makes sense to um, use a species that's native to the area. Yeah. 
Now he's working with Jane Bradley from the Minganew Irwin Group, which represents about a thousand farming families. In the last decade, the use of perennial pasture seed by local farmers has increased from just 300 kilograms a year to 15 tonnes a year. They're hoping the use of forage shrubs will do likewise. I think there's huge potential with some of the native fodder shrubs out there and Enrich will show us which species are particularly suited for our area. And Craig Forsyth already has a head start. We have native Rogodia just across the fence in the scrub so it says it grows all right. And now it's just a matter of fine tuning it to see the prop interrow and uh, the grazing management and because I think the Rogodia offers a couple of alternatives whether it's uh, shade and shelter or just a balance in the diet you know like with what the CSIRO are doing with the Enrich program where we can use that as a self-medicator. Mm -hmm. the University of Western Australia's Faculty of Natural and Agricultural Science, Associate Professor Phil Verko has been investigating the bioactive properties of fodder shrubs. He believes some may control parasites in livestock. Actually, we've found some exciting things. I must say that at this stage it's a very quick um, you know, screening method because we're trying to cover a large number of species quickly just to get a, to see what falls out and what, what looks interesting. And we actually do have some interesting plants that, are both, that have this ability in vitro, so not, not in the animal at this stage, but certainly seem to influence worms uh, and their larval development. That's how we, we tend to screen them. How many have we got today that we're going to look at and screen? Seven. With research fellow Zoe Dermich, he's also been mixing the shrubs with rumen fluid in this anaerobic chamber. The result is that some species may greatly reduce methane production. That would be nice for two reasons. The, the climate is, is a great focal point at the moment, but methane is also an energy loss to the, to the animal. So if we could actually reduce the amount of methane that's the end product of this fermentation, then we're not only sort of reducing the amount of methane that's, that's given off into the atmosphere, but we're also capturing a bit more of the energy from the feed that the animal consumes. And so it's quite a, a positive thing on two fronts. Ultimately, though, they need to be palatable. And at Binu, Don Nairn is trialling 15 different shrubs in a one hectare plot. We're not sure yet, but um, the sheep seem to um, do good when they go onto the fodder shrubs, even if it's only for a short period of time, they seem to do well. The idea of crash grazing the site is to overcome any natural reluctance by the sheep to try something new. Part of what we're doing is looking at how we put together the, the management practices to give animals the experiences of these alternative forages, um, encouraging them to eat, because for them it's a balance between seeking diversity, that's what they'll try and do, but they're also confined by fear of the new. So it's that balancing act between encouraging them, to, just like us, to broaden our dietary habits and include a broader range of plants for multiple benefits. Don Nairn's on-farm trial is being replicated in large-scale trials at three sites in New South Wales, South Australia and here at the WA Department of Agriculture's Dry Land Research Station at Meredith, where they're growing 50 shrub species. They've been taking samples and analysing things like digestibility and nutritional values, but ultimately it's the sheep that will decide which varieties are the most promising. We'll start to get the sheep telling us what they want to eat. We have species out there that we've been using for years, such as Old Man Saltbush, and they do fit the system, but they're not the best, it's not the best species that's available, and we're hoping that some of these new species might just be uh, complementary to what we already have. After we've grazed the site to see what the sheep are telling us about what they prefer, we'll then crash graze the site, and what we'll do then is in another six months we'll assess what actual shrubs come back. So we'll see what their persistence is after a hard graze from our animals. Many questions remain about how to grow the forage shrubs and what combinations offer the best shelter, feed and land care. The Future Farm Industries Cooperative Research Centre says these are questions with added resonance because of the prospect of climate change. Well, farmers desperately need uh, an option for the future. I mean, they're facing increasing frequency of drought, 
and on some of the soils which were once good for cropping, they're going to prove to be marginal and that'll be due to climate and due to price. And so we're really keenly behind this because we think it'll provide them with a, a real option. And in fact, I, I would say it provides them hope where there's been some despair. The Future Farms CRC and Meat and Livestock Australia have been backing the Enrich project for the last five years and are hopeful more farmers like Don Nairn will benefit. We can still run high numbers of sheep on, on marginal land and, and don't have the country blow. And the fodder shrubs also uh, give the sheep a, a very good thermal climate, uh, shade and shelter, so we, we think that's working fairly well with the sheep.